welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering which is the course uh, you know being produced by the Indian Institute of Technology Bombay uh, Department of Civil Engineering. And we are in module 3 lecture 7 on compressibility and consolidation and uh, we have been actually discussing about the methods for uh, determining uh, quotient of consolidation. In this uh, particular lecture also we will try to discuss about another method uh, which is the rectangular hyperbola method and then we will try to discuss about uh, the secondary consolidation uh, concepts and then how to determine settlements of a compressible soil deposit from the uh, compression curves and uh, that is settlement of the compressible soil layers and uh, we also look into uh, you know when we have uh, you know construction uh, period when it actually happens for a certain period of time how the construction period can be accounted or corrected in the uh, you know in computing uh, time rate of settlements. Then we will continue the problem which we introduced ourselves in the previous lecture. So the correction for construction period as we can see in this uh, particular slide uh, in practice the loads which are actually applied to soil they are not instantaneous but over a period of time they are applied over a period of time that means that if you wanted to construct in a, a bund, an embankment of about 6 meter height it cannot actually happen all of sudden. So in that case you know it takes over a period of time and it can be you know a constant uh, you know rate at which the height will increase or when we look into the stages like uh, you know two stages or three stages depending upon that uh, when you take the uh, rate it can be also set as constant. So initially when we actually acquire the site there can be some uh, excavation or you know there so in this case there can be some uh, uh, you know the relieving of uh, pressures that is removal of the load and then uh, uh, reloading again because of the some restoration profile and then you know the fill will start uh, commencing up. So this is uh, you know the load versus time let, let us say that you know TC that is the time required for construction let us say that 6 months may be in the field or 1 year in the field that is called time required for constructing let us say an embankment of 6 meters or h meters height. So in this case if you are having uh, in an embankment of uh, certain height and which causes say pressure of say P dash then TC is set as the time period of construction. Now what we if you look into this uh, you know as per the Terzaghi's theory of one dimensional consolidation and it assumes that you know the load is placed instantaneously that means that here you will see that uh, the entire uh, uh, you know uh, this is uh, due to instantaneous uh, loading. But uh, as we know that this particular portion is not actually subjected to load you know first 6 months let us say that uh, the load will uh, not exist at all. In that case you know we actually end up uh, you know having the higher order of uh, settlements but over a long period of uh, you know after a long period of uh, uh, you know elapsing long period after the construction then again they tend to be same that is that is what you can see that. So here what we see is a corrected curve. So how to you know obtain this corrected curve that we look into it and then we apply this in the problem which we are going this which, which we are discussing uh, from the previous lecture onwards. So in practice what we are summating is that the structural loads are applied to the soil not instantaneously but over a period of time. So Terzaghi proposed an empirical method for uh, uh, correcting uh, uh, empirical method of correcting the instantaneous time settlement curve time settlement curve to allow for the construction period. So Terzaghi has come out with uh, uh, an empirical method uh, of correction. Uh, for in instantaneous time settlement curve to allow for the construction period. So uh, what we do is that the net load P dash is the gross load uh, less the weight of the soil excavated and the effective construction period TC is measured from the time uh, when P dash is 0 that is when P dash is 0 means the construction period is actually measured from the uh, period the, not the excavation all those things from this stage onwards the construction period is measured from this stage to this stage that is TC that is the construction period. Now it is assumed that the net load is applied uniformly over the time 
tc and the degree of consolidation at time tc is same as if the load p dash had been acting as a constant load for the period tc by 2. So it is assumed that the net load is applied uniformly over the period of time tc and the degree of consolidation at time tc is same as if the load p dash has been acting as a constant load for the period tc by 2 that is of the construction period that means that the settlement any time during the construction period is equal to uh, that occurring for instantaneous loading at of that time that means that uh, you know if uh, settlement is there the settlement at any time during the construction period is equal to the, the that occurring for uh, instantaneous loading at that of the time however since the load then acting is not the total load the value of the settlement so obtained must be reduced in proportion of the load to the total load so in view of this let us define here let the tc is the time which is required for construction that is to raise to the pressure of p dash and if that settlement is say sc then what we are saying is that at tc by 2 also the consolidation so the what we are saying is that uh, if the, uh, the the settlement or, uh, or degree of consolidation at tc by 2 and tc are assumed to be same so uh, what we try to look into this is that consider at any time t uh, between 0 to tc a, uh, a a pressure t and which is a which is having an ordinate p1 here the loading pressure and at this point let us say the time t1 and uh, if uh, you know if you are trying to get this t1 by 2 the t1 by 2 the settlement is say sc1 here sc1 here so the settlement at uh, time uh, t1 should be less than that so in order to account for that we can write that that settlement at that particular point is nothing but s1 is equal to sc into p1 by p dash what we have done is that we actually apportioned with uh, we have we have apportioned with uh, p1 by p dash so p1 is actually less than p dash so p1 by p dash into the final consolidation settlement we said that that is s1 so this is nothing but what we have done is that we actually use this principle of triangles for this area for this zone and then this zone and then we try to compute the settlements here so from the similar triangles we can write p1 by p dash p1 is actually pressure within the construction period p dash at time tc so and then time is that t1 by tc is equal to s1 by sc so for the period subsequent to the completion of construction the settlement curve will be instantaneous curve offset by the of the effective construction period that is uh, what we are saying is that this particular one it is it is of the construction period that is tc by tc by 2 but a long period of elapsing long period after the construction they both remain to be same so thus at any time after the end of construction the corrected time corresponding to any value of settlement is equal to the time from starting of the loading less of the effective construction period. So uh, the from here what we understood is that thus at any time after the end of the construction the corrected time corresponding to any value of the settlement is equal to the time from the start of the loading less the of the effective construction period that means that you know what we have to do is that we have to take or deduct you know after the starting starting of the loading let us say that if it is 3 years is given and the construction period say it takes you know 6 months then 3 years minus 6 months is around 2 and a half years for example is the, the period that means that what we are doing is that we are deducting this effective construction period. So, uh, after a long period of uh, time the magnitude of settlement is not uh, of the effective construction period that means that if the construction period takes one year that is three years divided by one by two it is two and a half years after a long period of time the magnitude of settlement is not ap uh, appreciably affected by the construction time. So what we are doing is that uh, two important things which we have understood is that the instantaneous curve and correct corrected curve are initially during the construction period they are not the same so what we are doing is that as the loading intensity is less than what it is actually assumed in instantaneous curve computation so we correct the settlements such a way that you know the and then also 
uh, any time after the end of the construction the corrected time corresponding to any value of the settlement is equal to the time from the start of the loading less of the effective construction period and after sub after long period of time the magnitude of settlement is not appreciate appreciably affected um, by the construction time. Now let us look into this example uh, an 8 meter depth of uh, sand wall lies a 6 meter uh, uh, layer of clay uh, below uh, below which an impermeable, impermeable stratum is there the water table is 2 meter below the surface of the sand and over a period of 1 year. So here uh, the construction duration is 1 year please note the construction duration is 1 year a 3 meter depth of the fill uh, which is actually having an unit weight of 20 kilo Newton per meter cube is to be dumped on the surface over an extensive area that means that the area is the fill area actually spreaded over uh, large uh, areas. So the saturated unit weight of the sand is 19 kilo Newton per meter cube and that of the clay is 20 kilo per meter cube and above the water table the unit weight of the sand is 17 kilo per meter cube. So for the clay the relationship between the void ratio and the effective stress is given and this is nothing but E is equal to 0.88 minus 0.32 uh, logarithmic of sigma dash by 100. So uh, what has been asked is that uh, calculate the final settlement of the area due to the consolidation of the clay and the settlement after a period of 3 years from the start of dumping and the quotient of consolidation is given that is 1.26 meter square per year and if a very thin layer of sand freely draining type existed uh, 1.5 meter above the uh, bottom of the clay layer what would be the values of the final and 3 year, three year settlements. So uh, this is the, the uh, you know figure based on the problem uh, what we have discussed we have got a 6 meter uh, thick clay layer and uh, which is having a thickness of uh, six, uh, 6 meters clay layer having 6 meters thickness impermeable stratum here and so this is uh, you know uh, one way drainage water flows in this direction water flows in this direction and this is the open layer for this clay layer and uh, this uh, layer is having a thickness of about 8 meters and 2 meters is the depth of water from table from the ground surface and on this a fill uh, of uh, you know 3 meter height is placed over a period of one year and it is also possible that you know in some locations there can be chances of you know thin lenses of sand layers particularly in alluvial deposits they can exist and these deposits these type of thin lenses of sand layers can cause you know what is their effect we can actually see. So in this given problem we have a layer of this is 4.5 meter and this is 1.5 meter. So this problem is actually after Craig 2004 very classical problem where it has been discussed what is the effect of the you know this thin lenses of sand layers on the time rate of settlements. So this we have discussed but anyhow we will try to you know recapture what has been discussed. Uh, as we have seen that uh, the fill covers a wide area the problem can be considered to be one dimensional that is one uh, uh, we have discussed the consolidation settlement will be calculated in terms of CC considering the clay layer as a whole and therefore the initial and final values of the effective vertical stress at the center of the clay layer are required. So with this uh, once we calculate we get 182 mm as the settlement and which is uh, you know uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the ultimate consolidation final final consolidation settlement. Now here because of the increase in uh, the construction of uh, uh, you know the fill having a height of say 3 meters or a period of uh, 1 year. Now uh, what we need to do is that uh, we need to calculate the settlement uh, after 3 years that means we actually have to correct by using the Terzaghi's method what we discuss where T is equal to 3 minus Tc by 2 where Tc is nothing but the time required for constructing uh, 3 meter embankment that is uh, uh, 1 year. So 3 minus 1 by 2 2.5 years in the calculation of degree of consolidation 3 years after the start of dumping the corrected value of the time to allow for the 1 year dumping period is nothing but 3 minus 1 by 2 that is 2 and a half years. So the layer is off close that nothing but a single drainage therefore T is equal to 6 meters. Now from TV time factor is equal to TCV by H square or TCV by D square 
wherein what we get is that uh, 0.0875. So by using TV is equal to pi by 4 u by 100 whole square where we can actually get for u is equal to uh, average consolidation as 0.335. So as, the, as we know the final consolidation settlement which is 1822 mm and settlement after 3 years will be 61 mm settlement after uh, 3 years will be will only be 61 mm that means that 0.335 is the degree of consolidation uh, we have computed based on the data which you are having and the settlement after 3 years is say SC is equal to 0.335 into 182 that is 61 mm. Second problem what has second part of the problem has been asked that uh, the final settlement will still be 182 mm for even for the second uh, problem but the only thing is that the rate of the settlement will be affected why because if you are having a thin layer of sand and where it actually has got the uh, you know let us say that uh, the layer receives the water and has got the drainage capability then you know. Uh, you know it can actually work as uh, you know, from the bottom portion it actually can work as uh, uh, one way drainage and the portion above 1.5 meter it can work as a two way drainage. So in the, in, the, in the sense what will happen is that here we actually have uh, the positive effect of this uh, clay layer uh, the sand layer on the uh, uh, clay layer if it is detected in advance then you know there is a possibility that the settlements can be accelerated. So the from the point of view of the drainage there is now an open area open layer of thickness 4.5 meter uh, that is above a off closed layer of thickness d 1.5 meters. So uh, that is uh, uh, if we look into this here uh, this portion is uh, behaves like a one way drainage the water from here shunts down to this one and this portion which is actually having a drainage path of 2.25 meter half of the water goes this side half of the water goes this side and we assume that this layer actually has got a capability of pumping the water out from this layer this side this portion to this portion and uh, in this case now let us see what we do is that this upper portion of the layer actually having 4.5 meters thickness and bottom portion is having 1.5 meters thickness and total thickness of the clay layer is 6 meters uh, with this uh, you know we can actually calculate the effect of this uh, like this. So uh, upper portion of the uh, curve that is TV1 uh, for this uh, you know we can actually calculate uh, you know what is the uh, you know the based on the, uh, uh, the, the drainage TCV by H square uh, that is nothing but uh, 2.25 2.25 by 2 that is T, uh, T is nothing but 3 minus uh, 1 by 2 so and uh, uh, CV is 1.26 meter square per year divided by uh, that is 4.5 by 2 you will get 0.622 for 0 0.62 0 0.622 uh, by using uh, you know the uh, uh, we can actually get the degree of consolidation as 0.825 and then the bottom layer which is uh, you know which is nothing but uh, half closed layer so which is nothing but uh, TV2 can be obtained like uh, 3 minus 1 by 2 into uh, CV is 1.26 1 divided by 1.5 square with that what we get is that 1.4 so with this what we get is the degree of consolidation as 0.97 now if you look into this now for each layer sc is equal to u into scf now we have to get the uh, you know by using the weighted average method you have to get the u bar now upper layer is having a 4.5 meter thickness and bottom layer is actually having 1.5 meter thickness so 4.5 into u1 plus 1.5 into u2 is equal to 6 u bar so u1 is equal to 0.825 u2 is equal to 0.97 and so u bar is actually obtained as 0.86 now uh, for uh, so settlement after uh, 3 years can be obtained as final consolidation settlement we have actually obtained as uh, you know uh, 182 mm and uh, when we have only 6 meter thick layer of consolidation a 6 meter thick layer of one way uh, off closed layer we said that uh, the settlement of only 61 mm, 61 mm will occur but if you are actually having a, a thin sand layer then SC is equal to 0.86 into 182 that is 157 mm. So that means that if we are in from the soil investigation uh, data if we fail to recognize this type of occurrence of thin layers of sand and the design of this building is done 
from the bearing capacity and settlement point of view and if the settlements uh, of this order of 157 mm occurs within uh, you know period of say 3 to 4 years of from the start of the construction of the building or a structure and the structure which is uh, you know going to be uh, you know um, uh, the which is going to be placed going to have experience the distress because the allowable settlements in the clay are not more than 50 mm. So in this case what we can see that you know the settlements are uh, very excessive in nature and they can actually cause distress and failures to the structures. So this example clearly demonstrates the effect of the thin layers of the sands on the you know how they can actually have accelerating effects on the uh, rate of uh, consolidation. But uh, uh, unfortunately uh, if it actually occurs in a in your site and if it is recognized uh, uh, you know well in advance yes there is a possibility that the settlements can be accelerated. But if they if you fail to recognize then ill effects are discussed but uh, if these, these layers are there then there is a possibility that the settlements will be accelerated but it is hard to find this type of uh, things uh, you know occurring uh, repeatedly. So in view of that you know there are uh, several other methods which are uh, there for accelerating uh, consolidation. So those things we will be discussing while uh, addressing about the methods for accelerating consolidation settlements. Now uh, after having discussed about that particular problem let us uh, try to discuss about the another method which is uh, rectangular hyperbola method and which is after Sridharan and Prakash 1985 and based on this uh, equation which we have shown here u z is equal to 1 minus summation m is equal to 0 to infinity 2 by capital M sin m z by h uh, exponential of minus m square t v. So it can be shown that the plot of t by u a v versus uh, t v t suffix v will be of the type shown in figure a which we will be showing and in the range of 60 percent to uh, 90 percent of uh, average degree of consolidation the relation is linear and can be expressed as T v by U a v is equal to 8.208 into 10 to the power of minus 3 T suffix v plus 2.44 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So this is uh, what actually is shown here then the rectangular hyperbola method T suffix v T v versus uh, T v by U a v when it is plotted here you can say that this portion is non-linear and then this portion is uh, linear. And, uh, uh, that UAV between 60 to uh, 90 percent uh, what we are actually saying is that uh, the, the this is in the range of the linear range the relation is linear and can be expressed as this particular expression. Now similarly with uh, by using this uh, we can actually plot T by delta HT uh, with the time time required for consolidation then we actually get uh, this uh, part of variation like uh, O, B and C. So this this slope of this line is m m with m to the vertical ordinate and one to the horizontal and this point B and C that is actually uh, sixty percent and ninety percent and D and this ordinate is abscissa is D capital D. Now using the same analogy, the consolidation test results can be plotted in graphical form as t by delta H t versus time where t is the time and ht is the specimen deformation which will be of the type shown in the figure b that is what actually we have shown uh, this is the plot which is uh, t by t by delta h d versus uh, time t. Now, now the following the procedure uh, can be used to estimate the cv. So once we established once we plotted from the uh, sample deformation data uh, h t and delta h d is nothing but the sample deformation data which are recorded for the particular uh, uh, load increment and versus time of consolidation. So identify the straight line portion BC and project it backward to D determine the intercept. So what we need is that we have to plot T by delta H T with the time and then identify the linear portion extend this backward and determine what is this intercept D. Now determine the slope M of the line BC that inclination of the slope M. Now calculate CV as CV is equal to 0.3 into m h square uh, divided by d capital D. Now here uh, we can check whether it is uh, giving units of meter square per second or not. Uh, the while uh, the authors while setting this one uh, h is the length of the maximum drainage path 
that is uh, if it is a single drainage or uh, double drainage and note that the unit of m is uh, l minus 1 that is unit of length is 1 by l and unit of d that intercept is t by l unit of uh, d is t by l. So if you look into this 1 by l uh, into uh, that is l 1 by l into l square uh, into t by l uh, on simplification what we get is that Cv as the l square by t that is nothing but meter square per second meter square per year or meter square per day. So that is uh, this is how you will actually try to get uh, the coefficient of consolidation by using rectangular hyperbola method. Now we actually have in the beginning when while discussing uh, the consolidation and we said that uh, the consolidation component of a fine grained soil is uh, three components one is uh, you know elastic and second component is the major component which is you know the primary consolidation settlement and primary consolidation portion and thirdly what we said is that due to secondary consolidation or secondary compression. And this total you know summation of all these three are put together is called total settlement which is nothing but due to elastic settlement cause consolidation settlement and then secondary consolidation settlement. The secondary consolidation settlement they do occur on soils like PT type of soils or certain type of you know soil like materials municipal solid waste they undergo very high degree of secondary consolidation. So clays or certain type of soils or soil like materials continue to settle under sustained loading at the end of the primary consolidation and this is due to the continued readjustment of clay particles and this phenomenon is called secondary consolidation. Clays, particularly, this also called as creeping of soil or some, say, you know, say the secondary creep or secondary compression. So, clays of certain type of soils or soil like materials continue to settle under sustained loading at the end of the primary consolidation, and this is due to the continued readjustment of the clay particles, and this phenomenon is called uh, secondary consolidation. Now, if you look into this here this particular slide where uh, uh, figure where time versus delta v delta v is nothing but the volume change is uh, plotted here and uh, that is nothing but delta h and uh, here a, uh, a into delta h is nothing but delta v. Now we up to e we can say that the process of pre consolidation primary consolidation it actually happens. So initially at small times the hydraulic gradients are very high the flow is very rapid and as the time elapses and it comes closer to the completion of consolidation the hydraulic gradients you know they drop down to almost to 0 and no flow conditions occur and the settlements almost the 0 excess pore water pressure conditions prevail and it is also it will be that you know when there is no change in the loading the excess effective stress also changes will be minimal. Then we can actually say that you know the soil consolidation is complete and all. But it then the curve also tends to become asymptotic to the horizontal and then it pretends as if that the consolidation is complete. But in certain type of soils that is actually beyond point E even under the constant effective stress the soil undergoes you know the multiple structural changes and because of readjustment of the particles under because when the particles undergoing a creep there is a possibility that the secondary compression or secondary consolidation or creep can result. So at point E excess pore water pressure is 0 and a constant sigma dash appears and no change in delta V occurs but however a small changes in delta V occur due to the soil creep. So this is a typical time dependent, time dependent compression of the soil is actually shown here. So secondary consolidation settlement is more important than the primary consolidation uh, yeah, basically if you are having an organic and a highly compressible inorganic soils. So if you are having a organic particularly uh, a marine clay or highly compressible inorganic soils there is a possibility that uh, the secondary consolidation settlement will be much more than the primary consolidation settlement. In uh, war consolidated inorganic clays the secondary compression C alpha is very small and of less significance. For example, if you are having a war consolidated inorganic clays, the secondary compression C alpha is very small and it is of less practical significance. So in this particular slide, 
uh, wide ratio versus uh, time is actually shown here on the logarithmic scale. So this is the end of the primary consolidation but beyond this uh, time you can say that time T1 is the let T1 is the time at the end of uh, primary consolidation the soil undergoes a change in void ratio that is delta E and the time let us say is T2. So T2 minus T1 let us say is uh, you know um, that is uh, the slope of this line is indicated by C alpha where C alpha is nothing but delta E divided by logarithmic of T2 by T1. So C alpha is nothing but logarithmic of delta E by uh, log T2 by T1. So the settlement actually is written as secondary consolidation settlement is nothing but C alpha into HC by 1 plus EP where EP is nothing but the void ratio at the end of the primary consolidation that is EP is nothing but the so initially we will start somewhere here and at the end of primary consolidation we reach here. So from EP to delta E the change will be there so that is nothing but here is indicated as SC is equal to SS is equal to uh, you know C alpha that is the uh, secondary consolidation coefficient into HC by 1 plus EP into logarithmic of T2 by T1. So T1 is the time required for completion of uh, primary com consolidation and time 2 is the time at which the secondary consolidation is being determined. So it can be of let us say 1 logarithmic cycle that is let us say uh, T2 is equal to 10 times T1 then it is uh, C alpha is equal to uh, you know the that is uh, C it is equal to 1. Now from uh, for uh, according to Messri 1973 uh, for sedimented undisturbed soils for uh, sedimented undisturbed soils delta E by delta log T decreases with increase in the final consolidation pressure. So for sedimented undisturbed soils delta E by delta log T decreases with increase in the final consolidation pressure and the remolding of clay creates a more dispersed fabric. So this results a decrease in the effect of uh, coefficient of uh, secondary consolidation at lower consolidation pressures as compared to that of for the undisturbed samples. However it increases with consolidation pressure to a maximum value and then decreases finally merging with the values of normally consolidated undisturbed samples. So remolding of clays create a more dispersed fabric the clays uh, you know soil fabric changes and this results in a decrease of the coefficient of secondary consolidation at lower consolidation pressures as compared to that for the, the undisturbed samples. However it increases with consolidation pressure to a maximum value and then decreases finally merging the, with the values for normally consolidated undisturbed samples. So pre-compressed clays or preloaded clays show a smaller value of coefficient of secondary consolidation. So the degree of the reduction appears to be a function of the degree of pre-compression. The degree of the reduction appears to be a function of degree of pre-compression. So there are uh, empirical correlations are actually available uh, you know for secondary compression index C alpha uh, for inorganic clays and silts which is uh, C alpha is equal to 0 0.04 times CC where CC is the compression index for inorganic clays and silts for organic clays and silts it is uh, uh, regarded as uh, 0 0.05 times uh, cc and for peats that is fibrous uh, nature uh, type of uh, soil types which is actually peat which is uh, the part of marshy lands c alpha is equal to can be as high as 0 0.075 into cc for war consolidated clays uh, with war consolidation greater than 2 to 3 uh, the uh, you know the secondary compression index uh, will be only 0 0.001 organic soils it is 0 0.0252 or more and normally consolidated soils will have 0 0.004 to 0 0.025. Then as I said that municipal solid waste is a material which is generated from the uh, is a man made waste and wherein it actually has got a combination of uh, 40 to 50 percent of biodegradable waste and then other inert materials like construction waste and uh, so in this mixture of the heterogeneous mixture of materials causes you know very high normally uh, for uh, uh, you know this uh, ranges from 0 0.024 to 0 0.03 but uh, even up to 0.163 to 0.35 are reported uh, by Shyokuma or Babu at all. So the creep deformations are uh, small and normally neglected 
it is required to be however you know we need to notice that you know uh, the creep deformation if you look into that this uh, this uh, compression indexes values are very very small when compared to compression index so the creep deformations are small but normally neglected but it is required to be noted that the small time dependent deformations that are not due to ex exclusively to change in exmodash do occur in soils and soil like materials so in case of municipal soil waste this occurs due to you know ongoing biodecomposition wherein uh, this actually uh, you know results in the changes in the uh, you know these uh, you know very large changes in the uh, secondary compression index in fact uh, in in the case of municipal solid waste it actually is defined as c alpha 1 and c alpha 2 c alpha 2 which is the due to the uh, you know bio decomposition and c alpha 1 uh, is the initial part of secondary compression which is in the uh, you know if you are having a c alpha of say 0 0.16 and 0 0.163 and uh, you know out of that uh, 10 to 20 percent is uh, of C alpha 1 and the rest of the portion is C alpha 2. So after having uh, discussed about uh, uh, the secondary uh, compression and uh, how this can be um, used in uh, calculating then you know we can calculate you can see how the uh, settlement of a compress compressible layers can be calculated in one dimensional settlement this is basically a one dimensional settlements and so if the clay layer of uh, thickness say HT is subject to an increase in pressure uh, pressure increase due to sigma naught dash at the mid depth of the clay layer to sigma one dash so settlements are always uh, computed uh, at the mid depth of the clay layer the reason uh, we have discussed is that uh, at the mid depth of the clay layer there is uh, you know uh, uh, during uh, let us say 50 percent de uh, degree of consolidation or 90 percent degree of consolidation there is a certain amount of pore water pressure had to be dissipated. So in view of that you know the settlements are actually com uh, computed at the mid depth of the clay layer. So if the clay layer of, uh, of layer of total thickness HT is subjected to an increase in uh, uh, of the average effective or burden pressure from sigma naught dash to sigma 1 dash it will undergo a consolidation settlement of H1 hence the strain can be given by the strain is nothing but a vertical strain which is nothing but delta HT by HT and so this is actually shown here schematically when you are having in the field a soil where it is subjected to pressure from sigma naught dash to sigma 1 dash delta HD is the settlement and HT is the original thickness so the strain is nothing but delta HD by HT. But if you are having a, a, you know volume of the voids and volume of the solids here which is actually indicated as 1 and total volume is 1 plus E naught or specific volume which is uh, you know de defined as 1 plus E naught is small small v that is uh, specific volume is nothing but 1 plus void ratio is the specific volume and if the change in void ratio is say delta E uh, and we can actually say that change in volume to original volume which is nothing but delta E by 1 plus E naught so this is also you know equal to strain. So again if an undisturbed laboratory specimen is subjected to the same effective stress increase then the void ratio will decrease by delta E. So the strain is actually given by delta E by 1 plus E naught. So with this uh, what we actually obtain is that by equating uh, you know this strain due to uh, change in thickness and change due to strain in wide, wide ratio both appears to be same now so epsilon is equal to delta H T by H T and delta E by uh, 1 plus E naught. So we can actually calculate uh, delta E is equal to uh, uh, delta H T into 1 plus E naught by H T. Now in this particular figure you know it is actually shown here like we are having a clay layer and which is having a distance of say H1 from the base of the foundation H2 from the you know from the bottom of the clay layer is H2 meters away and top of the clay layer is H1 meters away the thickness of the clay layer is H2 minus H1 so HE is the thickness now here what will happen is that uh, when, when, whenever we load a certain structure and uh, uh, the increase in uh, st uh, stress is nothing but you know uh, what, whatever we have discussed in stresses due to uh, stresses uh, due to loads on uh, soils that we have actually discussed. So based on the appropriate whether it is a circular shape or whether it is a uh, strip loading whether it is a uniformly loading or is a raft loading accordingly what we need to do is that we have to calculate the increase in stress in different portions of so uh, uh, what exactly we need to do is that we have to divide this clay layer into suppose if it is 6 meters each layer is actually divided into say 
six one meters of thickness. At at each one meter, uh, you know, at a point five meter within that layer, we calculate what is the increase in thickness, and we know the effective stress at that particular uh, point. Then the sigma naught two, dash one plus this delta s sigma one. That is actually is the increase in stress. So we can calculate what is the small increase in consolidation settlement. That is delta one, delta two, delta three, like that up to delta six. The total which actually is resulted as the you know the consolidation settlement. The more you actually you have like you know short uh, shorter uh, th thickness of uh, layers, then the more uh, you know effective is the determinant of the uh, you know the settlement the determination of settlements. So. So now we can actually have uh, the two cases. Uh, one is that the soil can be normally consolidated completely. That means that uh, uh, you know the, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the we can actually have a virgin compression curve like this. Then the the slope of this curve is the compression index. Then we can actually calculate the consolidation settlement. But it can be also like we can have a war consolidated portion and normally consolidated portion. Sometimes we are actually have if this is the sigma t c dash and if this is the pre-consolidation pressure, then you know if the load is only up till here, then we actually have uh, you know the uh, settlement only due to war consolidated portion. But if you are having a settlement here, then uh, if you are having a loading here sigma one dash here, then we have to calculate settlement from here to sigma naught dash that is initial pressure to this one from here to here. So the total resulted due to war consolidated portion as well as the uh, you know the uh, as well as the uh, normally consolidated portion. Sometimes uh, if you are not able to capture the war consolidated nature of the clay from the log from the consolidation test data, and uh, then you know we actually calculate settlements by assuming that the soil is uh, normally consolidated. Then we tend to predict very high order of settlements, and uh, the sometimes uh, it results in the conservative uh, mode of uh, estimation of settlements. So uh, from this uh, slide uh, the deliberation uh, what we can discuss is that if you are having a, a sigma naught dash is equal to sigma c dash uh, then you know we can say that uh, sig, uh, that is consolidation settlement is equal to delta e by 1 plus e naught is equal to uh, c c by h c by 1 plus e naught where h c is the thickness of the clay layer. So here uh, whether it is off drainage or full drainage entire thickness is going to undergo uh, the settlement. So we have to consider here the full thickness of the total thickness of the clay layer and cc is the compression index e naught is the initial void ratio at an effective stress of sigma naught dash. So log of sigma naught dash plus delta sigma average uh, this delta sigma average which is like you know it can be at the um, that mid depth of clay layer and uh, sigma naught dash. So for normally consolidated clay that is sigma naught dash sigma naught c and war consolidated clay suppose if you are having uh, you know uh, only up to sigma naught c and then there is a war consolidated portion then we actually have to use uh, this uh, cs that is the slope of this line the slope of this line in the war consolidated portion is uh, cs so uh, the settlement soil will be very low if you are actually having a war consolidated soil and uh, if the loading is only up to sigma c uh, up to the pre consolidation pressure then the settlements will be very minimal but if you are having uh, like uh, the loading is uh, say somewhere here then we have to calculate this portion and we have to calculate this portion. So that is actually here it is listed it is nothing but cs into uh, H, hc by 1 plus e naught log sigma c by sigma naught. So here sigma naught to sigma c that means that we have accounted from here to here then, uh, then further sigma c to the next one that is uh, incre increased here. So that is nothing but cc by here here it is the normal consolidated portion that is the uh, compression index is actually accounted here uh, cc by hc by 1 plus e naught into log sigma naught dash plus delta sigma av by sigma c dash. So like this by using uh, these compression curves one can actually determine the uh, the secondary consolidation settlements uh, the one can determine the uh, you know the consolidation settlements. Uh, so this. Uh, uh, one need to you know this is actually based on the compression curves which are actually deduced from the, the testing data and once these data are available then it is possible that uh, one can calculate what is the uh, how long it will take to occur the settlement and what is the magnitude of settlement. So the empirical methods uh, for uh, to obtain CC in the absence of 
laboratory data let us say that if you are actually having a uh, this uh, scanty laboratory data or uh, field data then one can actually you know uh, estimate uh, there are methods or the empirical methods are there to estimate uh, compression index. So uh, then uh, from there we can also estimate now secondary compression index also. Uh, so here say according to Skempton 1944 CC is equal to 0 0.009 LL minus 10 this is for undisturbed clays for remolded clays it is 0 0.007 into LL minus 10. So liquid limit has to be given in percentage here that means if liquid limit is say 50% 50 minus 50 10 into 0 0.0007 which if you use then you will get the compression index for a remolded clay. Similarly uh, Worth and uh, Wood 1978 they postulated CC is equal to 0.5 times uh, GS uh, into PI uh, percentage by 100. So GS is uh, the, uh, the, the shear modulus and uh, this is actually used for uh, calculating uh, the uh, for uh, postulating uh, the CC value uh, from the plasticity index as well as the, uh, the GS. And Rendon and uh, Herrero 1983 uh, they have given uh, again based on the uh, GS here is uh, uh, is not the shear modulus it is the specific gravity of the clay GS is the specific gravity of the clay and uh, E is nothing but the uh, initial void ratio. So GS is nothing but the specific gravity of the clay and CC is equal to 0.14 into uh, 0.141 into GS to the raise 1.2 into 1 plus E0 by GS uh, to the raise 2.38 and similarly the Park and uh, Kaumato 2004 they actually have given uh, a empirical uh, uh, method to calculate the CC from the in situ porosity of the clay which is N0 in situ porosity of the clay from the porosity uh, value is that they have given and the Kulhave and Mayne May 1990 they have given CC is equal to plasticity index by 370 where plasticity index is taken as um, you know in percentage. So you can see that uh, the compression index is actually having uh, you know direct relationship with the uh, plasticity index most of our uh, soil deposits actually they do exist at uh, you know at uh, plastic limit. Uh, so uh, the plasticity, plasticity index is uh, you know if it is high then the compression index is also very high that is for uh, the clays of high compressibility CH type of soils the plasticity index value will be very very high. So then the, the compression index of such type of clay, clays also is expected to be on the higher side. Now let us uh, consider an example where uh, the results of an iodometer test of a normally consolidated clay are given below uh, is a two way drainage and uh, we have a sigma dash uh, kilo Newton per meter square the void ratio E that is at 50 uh, kilo Pascals and 1.01 and at 100 it is 0.9. So the time for 50 percent consolidation for the load increment for 50 to 100 kilo per meter square was 12 minutes and the average thickness of sample was 24 mm and uh, we need to determine the coefficient of permeability and the compression index. So in this particular uh, problem the time for 50 percent consolidation for the load increment from 50 to 100 kilo Newton per meter square was 12 minutes. So for time for 50 percent consolidation for the load increment uh, from 50 to 100 kilo Newton per meter square uh, is given as 12 minutes and the average thickness of sample was 24 mm and determine the coefficient of permeability and the co compression index. So based on the data here we can actually calculate TV is equal to TCV by H square and uh, the U average is equal to 50 percent. So it has been asked actually the two way drainage and 50 percent consolidation. So for UAV is equal to 50 percent TV is equal to uh, that is average degree of consolidation 50 percent TV is equal to 5 by 4 U by 100 whole square. So with that we can actually calculate time factor as 0 0.1, 0 0.197. So with this by knowing 0 0.197 CV uh, this time is uh, uh, what we need to say 12 minutes. So uh, the 12 minutes divided by 2.4 by 2 with that what we get is that CV is equal to um, you know 0 0.236 cm square by, mini, by minute. So we can actually get 0 0.0236 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meter square per minute. So with this uh, what we can actually get is that uh, by knowing the CV value we can actually 
you know calculate now quotient of permeability as we know that by knowing uh, uh, k is equal to cv mv gamma w or we can write also cv is equal to k by mv gamma w with the k divided by mv is nothing but delta e by delta sigma dash uh, into 1 plus uh, av uh, into gamma w. So with this uh, from the given data uh, we can actually get uh, delta e as 1 minus uh, 0 1 minus 0 0.9 so that is nothing but uh, 0 0.11 and delta sigma is nothing but 100 minus 50 that is uh, 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 50 and uh, by using this we can actually also get the so quotient of uh, consolidation as well as the quotient of permeability that is 0.2605 into 10 to the power of minus 7 uh, meter per minute and the compression index is now can be calculated uh, by using delta E that is 0.11 divided by logarithmic of sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash which is nothing but 1.01 minus 0 0.9 divided by logarithmic of 100 by 50 which works out to be by 0.365 the compression index is actually works out to be 0.365. So it is also like this from the by knowing the consolidation properties of soil uh, in the in the laboratory uh, like uh, by using uh, let us say we have got from here for the from the laboratory data and we can also calculate what is the time required for the uh, soil the same consolidation to occur in the field like for example uh, by then in that case what we do is that we actually project our analogy of the results from the uh, laboratory to the field. So in that case uh, how we get is that the time required for the field is equal to time required in the laboratory into hf divided by h laboratory whole square is nothing but uh, if the time required in the laboratory once you know like here in this case uh, say 12 minutes into uh, suppose if this is the result which is actually obtained for uh, uh, a two way drainage layer having say 6 meters thick clay layer. So 6 by 2 uh, divided by uh, 2, uh, 2 point, uh, 0.24 by 2 that is uh, 24 mm divided by 1000 by 2 and uh, by whole square which we were able to get what is the time which actually will take for the soil layer to undergo consolidation in the field can be uh, forecasted. So in this particular uh, lecture what we have discussed is that we discussed uh, the quotient of consolidation uh, determination based on uh, um, you know rectangular hyperbola method which is uh, according to Sridharan and Prakash 1985. Then we also have discussed that how the construction period correction can be done according to method which is actually postulated by Terzaghi and Frolish in 1936 and then we have also solved a problem and we also have discussed the effect of the thin lenses of sand layers on the time rate of settlements not the magnitude of settlements the time rate of settlements they will be very fast in the case that what will happen is that in the given uh, not the final consolidation settlement but uh, uh, you know the rate at which for example for a given period of 3 years if you do not recognize the thin layer of sand the settlement will be uh, very less but the structure will be subjected to high distress because of the prevalence of the neglected or ignored uh, thin layer of sand. Then thereafter we also have discussed about how we can actually uh, compute the settlements and also we discussed about the secondary compression and secondary creep in this particular lecture.